In this video, we're going to show that the wave functions of the rigid rotor model, the spherical harmonics, are orthonormal to one another. So the wave functions of the rigid rotor are the spherical harmonic functions y, j, m of theta and phi. j and m are quantum numbers. j starts at zero and goes up to infinity as an integer. m is allowed to take on all the values from negative j up to positive j. Theta and phi are the angular coordinates in spherical polar. Theta, the polar angle from the z-axis. Phi, the azimuthal angle in the xy plane. So these functions equal a normalization constant times a polynomial of cosine theta, the associated Legendre polynomials, times a complex exponential in phi. So 2j plus 1 over 4 pi j minus absolute value of m factorial over j plus absolute value of m factorial, square root of all of that. The associated Legendre polynomials depending on j and the absolute value of m of cosine theta times e to the i m phi. Okay, so the Legendre polynomials, not the associated Legendre polynomials, but the Legendre polynomials have the property that if you integrate them from minus 1 to 1, pj of x times pj prime of x, so some uh, another value of j, with respect to x, which is the Dirac integral j, j prime, that brocket, is equal to the Kronecker delta. So it's 1 if j prime equals j. It's 0 if j prime does not equal j. So they are normalized because it's 1 if j equals j prime and they are orthogonal because they're 0 if j prime does not equal j. So over the inter interval z minus 1 to 1, the Legendre polynomials are orthonormal. So now let's do a transfer into what we're going to do. We're going to transfer x to cosine theta. That takes our limits of integration from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to pi. And it takes our volume element from dx to sine theta d theta. So now the integral from 0 to pi of pj of cosine theta times pj prime of cosine theta sine theta d theta equals Kronecker delta over 2j plus 1. So they're still orthogonal, but this 2j plus 1 ends up showing up in the normalization constant. Okay, then we have, if we look at the associated Legendre polynomials instead of the Legendre polynomials, we have the following relationship for different values of j, but the same value of absolute value of m. So the integral from 0 to pi of pj absolute m cosine theta times pj prime absolute m cosine theta times sine theta d theta is equal to 2 over 2j plus 1 times j plus absolute value of m factorial over j minus absolute value of m factorial times De Kronecker delta j, j prime. So even for the associated Legendre polynomials, which will integrate over the values of theta from 0 to pi, 0 to 180 degrees on the z-axis, we'll get that they're 0, they're orthogonal if you have different values of j, and if you have the same value of j, you get this value which shows up in our normalization constant. So if we have different values of j, these functions are going to be orthogonal to one another, and we normalize them through this normalization constant. So the functions are orthonormal for different values of j. Now for the, for the phi part, that's going to be an integral from 0 to 2 pi, 360 degrees in the xy plane. We have phi star m prime of phi times phi m of phi with respect to phi or the Dirac brocket m prime m. So this time the complex conjugate does matter because I have an i in here. There's never a complex part in the theta function, so I just ignored it down here. But it does show up because we have a complex exponential here. We have i, which its complex conjugate changes to minus i m phi. All right, so this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, e to the i m prime phi star times e to the i m phi d phi which is the integral of 0 to 2 pi e to the i m minus m prime phi d phi, because this is a minus i m prime phi plus i m phi, factors out to this value. So this gives us a 2 pi 
delta m, m prime. So if the values of m are different, the functions are orthogonal to one another. And this 2 pi, for when they're equal to one another, where this is a 1, shows up also in our normalization constant. So there's a 2 there, a 2 pi there, those combine to be this square root of 4 pi in there. So our phi functions are orthonormal as well because we can normalize them and they are orthogonal. So when we have different values of j, they're orthogonal through the Legendre polynomials, the associated Legendre polynomials. When they have the different values of m, they're orthonormal and orthogonal through the complex exponential. So our total integral, the normalization integral of or the overlap of j prime, m prime, j m, integral from 0 to 2 pi d phi, integral 0 to pi d theta sine theta, y j m star theta phi, y j m theta phi, is equal to Kronecker delta j j prime, Kronecker delta m m prime. If j and j if j is equal to j prime and m is equal to m prime, this is 1. So for the same spherical harmonic, it is normalized. If j or m are different from j prime or m prime, then we get a 0, meaning that these functions are orthogonal as well. So we've just shown that the spherical harmonic functions for the, for the rigid rotor wave functions are orthonormal and they meet the criteria that we need our eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian, these wave functions, to be orthonormal to one another, showing that both j and m must be equal for the integral to be 1, and if they are not both equal, we get it to be 0, indicating orthogonality.